What's up, Gear Mortals? I'm a happy boy, because I get to do more and more of my favorite kinds of videos, which are writing songs from random drum grooves. In case you haven't seen me do this before, the concept is very simple. I've got these dice, and I've got a bunch of MIDI drum grooves from TuneTrack that I'm gonna use in Superior Drummer 3, and I'm gonna roll the dice to determine which of those drum grooves I'm gonna use to build the drum track for our song. So hold on to your butts, because now it's time to let the dice decide our fate. For this one, I added in some packs that I haven't really used before. So we've got Metal Fusion, Progressive Foundry, Metal Beats, which I've never used, but that's Dirk Verburen, Metal Machinery, which is Nick Barker, Power Metal, which I use all the time, and then Metal Machine, not to be confused with Metal Machinery. This one is John Tempesta, Thrash Metal, and then High Energy Grooves. I've gone with a pretty typical song structure, but here's the kind of twist that I'm gonna throw into this one. I want this one to be like, swing feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the swing button under type. So what that kind of amounts to here is that we're subdividing in triplets. If you ask jazz guys what swing is, it's not just broken triplets, like there's a whole thing, but that's basically what it's gonna wind up sounding like, especially in metal. It's kind of like a six eight feel. We're just gonna try it out and see what happens. First we're gonna roll for the tempo. I'm gonna roll a D10 and a decimal dice and then add 100. 10, 110. Now I'm gonna roll the D8 to determine which part of the song is going to come from which pack. So starting with the intro, four, metal machinery. Verse one, five, which is power metal. Pre-chorus one, also five. Chorus one, six, metal machine. Solo, four, metal machinery. Verse two, eight, high energy grooves. Pre-chorus two, three, which is metal beats. Chorus two, five, power metal again. Bridge, two, progressive foundry. Chorus three, will also be high energy grooves. All right, now the instrumental section. Two, progressive foundry again. Finally, the outro, high energy grooves. All right, pretty good spread, I think. So since I have swing selected on here, that creates a filter where all we're going to get are swing beats. And then I'm going to the metal machinery pack, which is going to then display for us only swing beats that are in the metal machinery pack. So that narrows it down quite a bit. And then we sort by name, which gives us the different parts of the song. And actually that only gives us five intros to choose from, which is fine. I'll just roll a D6, two. First one, D12, two. Pre-chorus one, seven. Now here comes chorus one, D20, nine. That is a, a weird and slightly drunken groove, I like that. And then the solo section, uh, I'm just gonna use a chorus, two. Verse two, which is coming from high energy grooves. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> high energy grooves does not have any swing beats in there, and I did not notice that. Let's do Rhythm Sauvage instead. Gotta be flexible, right? High energy grooves is out, Rhythm Sauvage is in. Let's see what happens. All right, verse two. Feels like a bit of a downer, but okay. The dice decide our fate. The dice decide our fate. Pre-chorus two. I think one of my favorite parts about doing these is that it's like having 10 different drummers on a song. It's like you're building a, a drummer from other drummers' parts. Here's kind of an interesting twist. Metal Beats is not organized by which part of the song. It's sort of by power hand more than anything else. Pre-chorus feels like toms to me. So let's roll a D4 and a D10. to chorus two, E10 again, one. Ooh. That considerably cranks up the energy on the song. Bridge, only five possibilities for a bridge. Five. All right, then we got chorus three, gonna roll a D10, seven. So now, instrumental section. I want it to be really big, so we're gonna pull it from a chorus section. There, of course, there's only five of those in Progressive Foundry, but let's do it. Four. All right, and then 
our outro. D10, two. We got ourselves a song. And then lastly, we're gonna roll for the key of the song with this D12, where one is C, two is C sharp, etc. Six. That puts us in the key of F. So this one is gonna be a little more unique in how I'm putting it together. Normally at this point in the process, I don't yet know who the guest is going to be, but because I was on it this time, I have the singer booked in advance and it's Charlotte Wessels, formerly of Delane, now a solo artist. She just put out her first solo album. It's called Tales from Six Feet Under. You should check it out. And she wanted to be more involved in the whole process and not just get the track and drop a top line on it. So we're actually gonna work together on the music portion of it remotely because she's Dutch, so she lives in, where are Dutch people from? The Netherlands? The Netherlands. I'm pretty sure it's the Netherlands. So we're gonna have to collaborate remotely. This should be pretty interesting. This is not something that I've done with this series before. It hasn't been that collaborative but I'm excited because I think this is gonna be a lot more fun. So let's get Charlotte on the horn and see what happens. Hi everyone, it's Charlotte Whistles for a Gear Gods Random Song Generator. Now I am so excited that Trey asked me to join on this episode because I absolutely love the concept. So much in fact that I asked if I could do some dice rolling of my own. Now the idea that we came up with is I asked my patrons over the last couple of weeks to send in some song suggestions. I got over 80 of them and selected six and we're going to roll the dice to decide which one is going to dictate the topic of the song. I've got the contenders right here. All right, here we go. So option number one is dirt. I like it. It's a, it's like a bad thing, but good things can grow from it. It's got, it's got songwriting potential for sure. The second one, after all the apocalyptic themes I've covered over the last years, I think that this is a new low. Uh, the second idea is what if the world ran out of um, red wine? What if? The third one, Memento Mori. I like it. I, I've been in a goth band for 16 years and somehow never ever written a song with those words in it. So it's about time. Fourth one, Parallel convergences. That's not even possible. How interesting. I think that's got a lot of potential too. The fifth one is a classic. I think um, it would definitely turn a song into a kind of power metal thing if we went that way. It's swords and armor. How can you go wrong? Uh, the sixth one is, is really, this is the kicker. This is um, broccoli. So those are your options. I'm kind of not hoping it for it to be six but I felt like I had to put something in there to make it a challenge. So uh, let's see what we end up with. This is kind of sad, but I couldn't actually find my dice. So we're going to have to do with a digital roll of the dice. This is the moment of truth. Here we go. Number two. The world ran out of red wine. Well, all right. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to get started with this drum track. Uh, I put it down in a little song structure here. I made a little break before the third chorus and I doubled the first verse. As you can tell, it's quite slow and doomy. And it keeps that going into the chorus. And then the second verse is even more laid back. And it really starts going at the second chorus. But then it kind of goes back into this more chill mode. So I'm thinking that I'm going to keep it quite laid back. And with the topic of the world running out of red wine, I'm thinking this could be pretty goth. Uh, the angle that I want to take to the lyrics is basically a person under the influence of red wine. And then they are speaking about the things that they are going to start doing or stop doing when the world runs out of red wine. This is going to be sad. Getting started with the keys, I... Um, Started with an upright piano from the Easy Keys libraries. I'm just getting acquainted with them, but I think that they've got some really cool presets that you can also uh, tweak to your heart's desire. I really like the Britpop one because it's kind of it's kind of moody. Um, what I wanted to do for this part here is layer the bass notes a little bit with something a little bit spacey and dreamy just to give it some extra depth. 
So by itself, this sounds like this. So this is just a, a little cinematic atmospheric pad. This is the cinematic pads library and it has uh, so many different categories and presets that you could probably just uh, make an entire song out of <laughs> just what they have in here. Finally, I just uh, wanted to add a little um, ear candy. I uh, checked out Hybrid Heart, which harp looks really whimsical. <laughs> and I added like a, a, just a tiny little sparkle on top. It's called a little strange it sounds a little strange but again there is so many cool presets to choose from and it makes for some nice layers all right so we got our little arrangement here we've got our drums keys i've got some orchestral elements and then the vocals and I will play you a little bit of the the end. So lay with me now. Stay with me now. And I think that there's only one thing that the end really, really it's my joker I don't use it too much but I am going to now let's record some clarinets so it is now a few weeks later and Charlotte has sent over her tracks what she wrote to the drum beat that we created with the dice and it is magnificent I am so happy to work on this song all the chords and vocal melodies and everything are all here and uh that's very nice for me. <laughs> Charlotte is a great songwriter. All right, I got all the chords worked out. There's some really cool little things in here. The whole song does a key change up a whole step, leaves the third chorus and everything there out, being a whole step higher than the rest of it, which I think is a very exciting way to end out a song. So now I just gotta come up with, uh, with parts for every part. Parts for the parts. I tend to like to start with the chorus because it is always the most important part. So let's see what I can come up with here. The easiest thing to do, of course, would just be to play some power chords underneath it. That's not very exciting, but it also might just work. Yeah, really boring. <laughs> but now I have a handle on the chords. I gotta get this swing feel in here. That's got a lot more life to it. It's a bit better. So I'm actually gonna go to the second verse next. I like to do the sort of kitchen sink version first of whatever it's gonna be. And by that I mean with all the trimmings. But generally I like figuring out what the final version of it is going to be and then working backwards, that makes way more sense to me. So the second verse, hypothetically, will be more intense than the first, although it could be the other way around. Actually, the first verse does have more double bass in it. A consistent double bass, but it also, it doesn't necessarily have to be more stuff going on. It might actually work better with less, but I guess we're gonna find out. Actually, that's cool. I didn't think that that was going to be that cool, but... You think it's going to be there, and it's not. Okay, now do I want to fill that out? So I could do like... I don't know, I don't know which one I like better. I think more space might work better. It's so haunting. So I'm gonna try one and then the other.
pretty cool. I think I'm starting to get the vibe of this song and I really like it. I'm imagining that it's like kind of a loungy, smoky jazz thing, but metal. I'm gonna try and put in some kind of jazzy sounding things while keeping it heavy. And the second chorus here is really what's inspiring me to do that. I'm gonna do a thing on the guitar that's almost gonna be like a walking jazz bass line. Oh yes, oh yes, very heavy. I'm trying to do something outside of the box and not typical. I don't know if this is that, but I'm gonna try it. Some nice slidey things. So what Charlotte has for this first verse is so haunting that I kind of feel bad putting guitar on top of it. I don't know if it'll work. I've grabbed this lead guitar patch um, one of the Jeff Loomis ones, it's called Cavern Solo, and I have cranked up the reverb. Which apparently will go forever. So I wanna do kind of the like far away guitar thing. Let's see if that works. That to me feels better than just banging out some heavy chords at this part. Feeling a little bit more post-rocky than, than metal. But that just means that when we actually get to the heavy part, it'll feel heavier, like you've earned it. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit fancy with some inversions on this part. Rather than hitting some big old power chords, I'm saving those for the chorus. So for our pre-chorus here, I'm gonna do some, also in the sort of cavern-y guitar sound. Now I wanna add this lead guitar part to the second verse. Basically the same thing, but with a little bit of variation. Yarp, yarp. All right, now we're on the final chorus. I have copy pasted the first chorus just so that I can hear it and work off of it, but I'm gonna modify it a bit, try some, a couple little things. Got a little idea of something kinda classic for the ending. And then I'm gonna have to change up the drums to fit that, do a little bam, 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 bam. Except that I should have checked the chords and what Charlotte sent over because this does not fit at all in terms of the notes. Deleted. It works fine rhythmically. So now it's time to take a look at this instrumental section. Charlotte has come up with some really beautiful chord changes for this. I have to come up with a really nice melody to go along with that. I can't just come up with a beautiful melody that has nothing to do with anything else in the song. So I am going to reach backwards into the song to mine for cool parts that we've already done and then recontextualize them to create a lot of really good cohesion in the song. So actually my favorite thing that I've come up with so far in this is the melody that goes along 
in these verses. It's reasonably subtle as a melody because I wrote it sort of as a counter melody for what uh, Charlotte's doing on the vocals. I just wanna state it a little bit more explicitly as a part on its own. So let's see how that's gonna work. I don't wanna get too fancy because this isn't a solo. There's a guitar solo earlier on. This is a, a melodic instrumental part. Especially when you are doing a collaborative thing, your number one job is to not ruin it. I've been dinking around on this third chorus, trying to come up with like a second guitar part. And I realized the reason that nothing was working because it doesn't need it. Because this already sounds great just the way it is. I'm a little bit of a maximalist, okay? I like to add parts. I like to layer stuff. I like it to be really big and full sounding, but sometimes you gotta resist the urge. This is one of those times. All right, I'm about to try and tackle this solo here. And I'm gonna make this solo as jazzy as I can make it without being obnoxious. It might be obnoxious. <laughs> Now it's time to record some bass. So this is gonna be fun and a little kooky because I'm going to attempt to do some walking bass, which sometimes does not work out very well in heavy music. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to make it work because I really want this to have that kind of jazzy swing feel. Today we're using the Heavy Metal EBX in Easy Bass. This is brand new for Metal Month 2021 and it sounds pretty sick. Altogether, that gives us this. That's like maybe a C plus walking bass line in real jazz, but in metal, I'm not playing the root all the time, so this is uh, probably the greatest walking bass line in all of metal. That's a bold claim. I don't actually believe that that's true, but not bad. <laughs> 